Thank you for having me today. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. And uh, yeah. Thanks for coming to the channel. Just a few questions I've got for you today. And the first one will be, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so um, my name is Luigi and I am, I am, uh, I used to be a music producer, uh, sound engineer, uh, and I'm Italian and I moved to London about 10 years ago to study sound engineering here in London. Right. And uh, the reason why I, well, I moved because I was, you know, I loved sound and, you know, it was a passion of mine, music and stuff like that. And I wanted to know more about the ins and outs of what, it, you know, what happens, be, you know, behind the scenes. Because um, as, as someone that loves music, I always, uh, I always been DJing my whole life, right? And uh, I sort of wanted to know the, the, the behind the scenes. So the behind the scenes. So what happened was that I first uh, became a music producer. Uh, and then after that, I thought I would really wanted to know more about it. And so I wanted to, uh, I went to study at SA London and I had, uh, I've done my degree in sound engineering there. And, uh, and that was back in 2014. And yeah, uh, right now I run Oikla, which is a, uh, uh, an audio tech startup that, uh, with a mission that, with a mission of prevent, mass preventing hearing, hearing loss by enhancing audio. Uh, in a very different way than most people uh, would imagine. That's uh, that's about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks. And what made you start the plugin company, Oikla? So um, I actually um, Oikla is not necessarily a plugin company, although uh, this might sound weird to you and surprising. Um, the reason why we uh, start with a plugin is. So let me tell you why we started Oikla in the first place. So Oikla, I started Oikla because in, back in 2015, just when I started studying uh, sound engineering, I had I started having tinnitus uh, and some mild hearing loss. Uh, and for those that doesn't that don't know what tinnitus is, is a constant ringing in the ear that goes like beep all the time. And there's very not there's nothing you can do about it because it is. It is your brain producing it. It's not. Uh, it's not something that you're you're actually hearing, but it's your brain that projects that sound, and usually that is connected to uh, high listening levels, right? So if you're exposed to high listening levels, you end up having these sort of problems very usually. You know, very often. Sorry. Uh, and so I was very frustrated with the lack of solutions that were on the market. You know, like first of all, there's not enough awareness. Like most people don't know what. Uh, dangerous levels are. Yeah. They think that going all the way up on your phone is fine, which is absolutely not fine. Um, and uh, I was very frustrated because then I went to, you know, um, different, uh, you know, experts and they told me, you know, uh, they told me, well, sorry, there's nothing really can do about this. You know, you have it and now you have to be careful about your, um, your behavior when you listen to music. And so really what they told me is that I had to listen at lower listening levels. But guess what? When you listen at a low listening level, it sort of sucks. You know, it's not as, as exciting as when you boost sound levels. And I thought to myself, there must be a better solution to this. There must be like a way for me as a sound engineer and a music lover and a sound lover to experience sound in a safe way, but in, a, in an exciting way at the same time. Because um, the difference between low and high listening levels is that at low listening levels, we can perceive a lot less low and high frequencies. So in, in, in a few words, at low listening level, we can mainly perceive mid frequencies. And as we increase sound levels, we can hear a lot more highs and lows. Okay, mm -hmm. that's how our hearing works. And so by so back then, I thought to myself, all right, I need to make I need to create something that allows me to work, mix, produce whatever, uh, in a safe manner, but without losing the excitement. And so that's how I started the company. Uh, so the company really didn't start to make plugins in the first place, but was to actually solve a problem that WHO, WHO estimates that there will be 1.1 billion people that will risk hearing loss due to loud sound exposure in recreational, in recreational settings. And so I thought that was a massive, for me, that, was, that is still like a big problem. And if we don't address it, we're going to end up with whole generations having this big problem. So that's why I started the company. Now, why do we have Shape as a plugin? Um, so actually, Shape is not my—it's not the first product. Actually, Shape is our second product 
Um, and although it is the first product on the market, the first product is still in, in uh, the um, research and development phases, right? And in fact, if you go on the website and you go on mission, you can see our actual big standalone software. Wow. So shape, what shape is really is we what we what we what we you know what we felt was we can't really release the main product, but what we can do is we can take part of the technology that we've been developing for so many years on from the big product and we can package it into a smaller software that still packs all the math and all the science that we developed into something that sound engineers, sound designers, mastering engineers, whoever is in the audio industry can still use for not necessarily for hearing or hearing loss prevention, but they can use for uh, well for anything really. It's it doesn't have it's just the, a very accurate equalizer. So in a nutshell, this is why we got into the plugin market. The reason why we got into the plugin market is because that was the thing that I, that we know the best. We know best, you know, people in our industry. And so we thought rather than licensing this technology to platforms such as Spotify or Apple, because they're like, they're huge, right? And it's hard to approach them. Let's start, let's start and approach uh, the people that we know first, and let's see what they say about it. And so that's why we started by releasing Shape, so that we can, you know, it's easy for us to approach engineers, we understand them, because I am also an engineer, you know, I've been, you know, mixing and producing. That's why we started. That's how we started. You know, it was more of, a, let's get something out there and let's see you know, the pro, what, what the pro have to say about it. Because we, we strongly believe that if the pro accepts, well, if the pro likes our technology, then it's, uh, it's likely that also consumers and, you know, bigger companies would follow once we build a base of professionals. Absolutely fantastic. Well, my Thanks. next question would be, is there any new plugins you guys are maybe what they're looking or something that you would like to discuss of course yeah yeah like as i said shape is actually our second software or second plugin you know um the big one is uh called for now it, this is a name that is likely to change it's called perception and mm -hmm. it's a big plugin it's way bigger than the one you uh you showed on on the on the channel and it is it's actually a pretty big one. Sorry, the reason why I'm saying this is because we spent so much time working on it. But essentially, it's a soft, it's a standalone and plugin uh, that allows um, producers, anyone in the audio industry, to um, to make the listening experience safe, but also to perceive it as if it was played louder, but without actually increasing the level. So, for example, this this software will allow you to, for example, set your monitoring level at say 70 dB SPL right which is well within the safe range but you can choose to perceive it as if it was played at 85 or 90 or 100 right so that you don't have to increase some level to a level that is potentially dangerous for your for your hearing uh but still allows you to to mix in the the same way you would you would mix as if you're um you know if your playback was much louder right uh at the same, what this plugin will do also will also um, monitor your uh, real time levels, right? And it will give you statistics over your daily, weekly, monthly behavior, right? So that you can realize, you can understand what's your, you know, how loud you're listening. So you can you can see, oh my god, I've been listening like for three hours straight at around 90 dB SPL. That's really bad, for example, you know. And also, this plugin will also give you push notification to tell you, hey. Maybe you want to take a break because you're getting hearing fatigue and your ability to mix is actually diminished dram dramatically. And by taking 10 minutes break or 15 minutes break, that depends on the algorithm, you'll, you'll reset your hearing. And so when you go back, you will be better off at mixing, making decisions, and also preventing you know, damaging hearing loss, which I'm sure most of you, most of your audience knows, but hearing loss is, is unfortunately, you know, permanent. So there's very little we can do about it. So it's the only thing that, that we can really do is prevent it. Uh, a third thing that this plugin will do is that it will train, train you to, uh, to lower your uh, listening level over time. So when the plugin will give you um, sort of a signal to take a break, uh, when you take a break and when you, when you come back from your, from, from your break, uh, the listening level will be slightly dropped, right? And when you come back, you can do A, B, 
between what you were listening, the level at which you were listening before and after, so that you can realize that how loud it was before you left, right? Because there's another thing that happens uh, when listening at high listening levels um, is that there's there are little muscles in your in your hear in your in your hearing system that essentially tightens, right? And that is called, well, that's, that's known as hearing loss, right? And that is, they tense so that they prevent, the, uh, the, they prevent any damage essentially happening. Correctly. But that actually reduces your ability to, you know, to mix and do certain things. So this is really the big product. The, the big product we'll be releasing. Uh, we have to decide if we're going to release it as a plugin or as a standalone where you're going to route the audio from your whatever, you know, application, which could be from DAW to Spotify to whatever, wow. through this, and then from the standalone to, to the speakers or as a uh, plugin that you will have on your master bus. Um, yeah, any question about this that you maybe want to, I don't know, maybe there is, because you didn't know about this, I guess. <laughs> no, not at all. This obviously okay. is very new to me, but it's quite interesting especially you know the fact that he picks the statistics of your uh, listening behaviors and obviously push a notification to tell you hey bring this down if you're too high or at least that's yep. very interesting uh yeah let me clarify something though this is not going to be uh this 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 software this technology will not just be something that sits on your on your master bus on your software um, this will be connected to your uh, I, your smartphone uh, microphone, right? Because right. we're going to monitor your actual listening levels, not something digital. Like it's not that we're just going to care about. We're going to actually listen, not listen, but like monitor your sound pressure level from your listening position. So it will be highly accurate. And in fact, we do have a very accurate way of measuring it. Uh, so it will be based on real life, real world listening levels it won't be like based on the you know minus 6 db from your master bus or anything like that it will be measured actual how loud it is for you anyway we can go into, we can spend like an hour talking about this and all the science behind it but yeah very interesting you know i'm i'm quite you know keen i'm i should say i'm looking forward to it yeah like the, all you have to do is for now uh we are just collecting uh signups so all you have to do is go to www.oikla.com slash uh, mission and then you can find the uh, sign up page where you can sign up that's good awesome i'll be the first after this interview <laughs> nice thank you so the next question is obviously you know generally in the whole world the cost of living is going high how do you think this will affect the music industry including the plug-in industry well, I don't think people are going to stop making music or, you know, sound or media. It's just that, unfortunately, this will be less, become less of a job. I mean, meaning that, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, there will be less money in the industry and therefore people will be doing it mostly out of passion because they're passionate about it and not as a job. So I don't think that, you know, music is going to stop you know people will still love to do to make bits songwriting sound design whatever but it's just not going to be as 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 a job you know it's going it, to probably people are not going to make a job out of it you know not enough money to live off that um but i don't have any doubt in my mind that people will still make music you know i mean when i was making music i didn't make it and i'm sure that's also your case i mean I never did music because I wanted to make money. So I wanted to make music and it would be very nice to make money out of music because you can make a living out of it. But Absolutely. if I had to pay, if I have to, if I have to pay myself for the amount of hours I spend making music, that would be, <laughs> that would be, I would have to pay me so much money, you know? <laughs> so obviously I haven't done it for the money, you know? So, and I guess a lot of people feel that way and, and I'm sure a lot of people do that for the same reason, it's like painting, it's like, you know, making a sculpture. Um, but as, a, as an industry, of course, it, it will be affected. Of course, it will be affected. Um, but it's a momentary thing, you know, I think uh, it really depends. But I think it's a pretty complicated um, topic, uh, given that we live in the, um, in, the, in the area of Spotify, where we have big centralized power that controls 
uh, well, effectively, they control the music industry at, the, at this point. Yeah. And my hope is that, uh, um, you know, blockchain technologies, Web3 will help empowering new, um, you know, artists and producers and anyone in the industry, really. Uh, because we definitely have to change that. Sorry, maybe I'm deviating from the main question, but uh, yeah, that's that's really, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I also like to obviously ask, you know, like there are other young uh, people that are aspiring to maybe start coding, be it plugin or right. any other thing. Maybe just join the plugin rim. What advice do you have for them or how? Right. Uh, yeah. yeah get their hand into such uh, avenue so let me just be clear i am uh, this is going to surprise you as well but uh i am myself i am not a coder and i'll explain right um having said that i can program so what i started the way i started this company and this is something that everybody can do uh the way and you know i started this company i raised investments you know it's not like uh, this is, my company is not like a one-man job. It's actually multiple people in the company working. Uh, but the way I started is by using a software called Pure Data, or, and I'm sure many knows, MaxMSP. So Pure Data and MaxMSP are like uh, visual programming languages. I don't know if you, if you know about this, but it's um, essentially connecting, connecting few few boxes. And I can share the screen if you want. We can show it. You connect a few boxes together. It sounds like easy, but it's not. You, you connect, you can have boxes and each box ha or each, you know, square has their own function. And you can actually prototype very quickly, um, you know, DSP or plugins or, you know, essentially way to manipulate audio or synthesizer, synthesizer, you know, you can do many things. And so because I didn't have a, um, a background in, uh, you know, in coding, I didn't know how to code, that programming language allowed me to, uh, to actually create the whole, whole the prototypes that we have right now. Right, right. And what allowed me then was that I created a prototype and then I went to investors and I showed the prototype. And that was enough for, for us to raise investments. So if you, if, you, if, you're, if you have a great idea and you want to achieve it, there are like ways for you to um, make quick prototype. Uh, and, you know, you don't, what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to spend, you don't have to have a degree uh to make plugins you'll definitely have to, you'll, you'll definitely have to get someone at some point that will translate your pl your your right. prototype into a plugin that's for sure but like to start and to showcase what you want to do it doesn't it, it takes a max msp or pure data you know put a few things together well it took me years to make mine uh right. because it's very complex um but what I'm saying is that for example the other day well a month ago I created a prototype within three days and I am, you know, this is something that we're going to release as well. Right. But like, what I'm saying is that you don't have to have a, you know, you don't have to be a coder. You can just download MaxMSP or Pure Data, a couple months of, of training, and you'll be sort of already ready to create prototypes and share with your friends what you're doing. And that's my experience. You know, I, yeah, that's my experience. You know, my, my experience was I have this technology. I want to make it. I have an idea how to make it. I, I'm not a coder. How do I do it? Boom. I use that those softwares to do that. That's cool. That's brilliant. Thanks for sharing that. That's fine. Amazing. Let's also say thanks for obviously jumping on the interview. It's much appreciated. Quite nice to Thank have you. you on the channel. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and I hope to see you again soon, maybe for another for another in-depth chat about something else or for the new product. Definitely. When the new product is out, I'll be quite keen to have you on the channel to discuss about it. And again, guys, check out oikla.com. He's got obviously a lot of things going on, which he's obviously discussed on this channel. So go check out the website. Peace. Bye. Bye.